All right, welcome guys. I appreciate y'all being in here. It's January. We're starting out 2021. Uh, and I just wanted to really come together and provide some nice insights, some broker guidance, how we're going to start really conducting business during a pandemic. And for those of you who've been in the business, you've been experienced in you know X amount of years, I believe it's important to really fine tune your own business plan because ultimately what you've done in the past and the plan that worked previously needs to evolve. Your business needs to adapt. And we talked about that two weeks ago about adaptability. We talked about shifting and fine tuning our business, especially during a pandemic. A lot of things have changed to us. We've had to use PED forms, making sure that people were certifying that they're not infected with COVID. We've had different amendments and addendums added to our contracts to discuss COVID and the potential unforeseen circumstances that could delay a transaction or cause a transaction to fall apart, like loss of income, unemployment, and or one of the tenants getting COVID and limiting inspections. There's a lot of difficult challenges that we've had experienced in 2020. We learned a lot. And ultimately, I'm going to say we need to learn how to shift our business to adapt to that. Uh, so what, what, do you know, what other things did we notice in 2020 when trying to sell real estate in the pandemic? We noticed limited inventory. We noticed many sellers taking their property off the market because like while I'm still living here and selling the property, I did not want others to come into my property and home and potentially in, uh you know, expose me to the risk of COVID. I've seen a lot of tenants being refusing, creating excuses, or simply just out of their own uh, risk adverse personalities, choose not to comply with notices to 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 enter the, the premises for showings. I've had a lot of tenants who failed to pay their rents or paid part made partial payments or they lost their job and they gave the uh, letter or something in writing to the landlord that they've been impacted by COVID. We've seen real estate itself, how to sell real estate change. We've noticed that we've had no open houses allowed, no uh, traditional door knocking for prospecting clients. None of that is allowed right or, or prohibited because we don't want to go face to face with anyone. And what else did we notice? We noticed that the Limited inventory has caused high, high, high uh, activity towards the listings that did go hit the market. So we've seen a, sh a shortage supply uh, really, really impact the activity that we've had. Other incidental things that we've noticed during real estate that you guys seen, you know, this, let's please share. Is there anything out there that you've, you've, you've experienced or questions that you didn't come across? Because when I was uh, talking and, and helping manage with a lot of agents, I've noticed so many tenant issues and, and, and that, that's understanding on both fronts. So it's just really a, a situation that we have to shift our business in a different style perhaps. And uh, I faced it myself. I've had to deal with difficult tenants. I currently have a, a pending escrow and one of the tenants has contracted by the virus uh, two days prior to me having all of the inspections uh, on a Wednesday. And I had the termite guy coming, I had the home inspector coming and all the tenants were given notices and everyone was fine, except two days prior to that appointment date on Wednesday, Tenant now notifies me, hey, I got COVID, I tested positive. Uh, what do you want to do? What would you do? You guys are gonna do nothing? Okay. Well, I had to, I had to take action. So I'm not that type to do nothing. Uh, what I did was com completely understand the situation. I actually said, oh my gosh, and I, I was sympathetic to the tenant and I still needed their support and cooperation in the future. So I says, oh, look, tell me what's going on. What's the situation? Can I call you? And I called him. I found out that he, 
He is a first responder, uh, works at the fire department. He believes he caught it on the job. His, I got, I got facts. I gathered details. I said, Hey, I know your spouse is living with you. How's she doing? And he told me, Oh, she actually is still living in the same household. It's a two bedroom unit and she lives in the other bedroom and she tested negative recently. So that's some good news. I, based on my discussion, I says, look, you know, you're, you're looking like two to three weeks before anything happens. But I, I want to be helpful to you. I want to be someone to help you communicate stuff to the landlord. So I'll let the landlord know that uh, what's going on. And uh, ultimately, I said we're gonna have. I'm gonna call the shots and uh, postpone our inspections that we already had gathered. I'm gonna have to notify all the other tenants that it's gonna be postponed. And I'm gonna have to follow up with you in a couple of weeks. But can you, anytime you let me know when you have a negative test, I would appreciate it. And he, I got his word, I got his uh, cooperation, and ultimately, he, he, I, I just, I just building that re relationship, and I show sympathy. I report the news to the landlord. I, I tell them, you know, this is an, an issue that we should just basically postpone. I give my advice and consultation to the landlord who's selling the property, and I also notify the buyer's agent as a courtesy to all parties. I think it's important to know what's going to be causing this giving some uh, communication and I notified the tenant, uh, the, the buyer's agent that we're going to have to please call your inspector. I think we're going to have to cancel this and postpone it to another date, but don't worry. We'll have a soft extension for the inspection until we hear further news of a safe environment that he tests as negative. She said, okay, she'll let her notify her buyer. She canceled the inspection. I canceled the termite, blah, 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 blah. So, that's what the procedures I took on uh, on my own escrow right now. And yes, it is going to cause us a delay, three weeks, four weeks. I have no idea. And I have to notify the, ten the landlord that they should not be enforcing the due diligence period or contingency removal because this is an unforeseen circumstance that impacts, you know, everything. So... Now let's get into today's training. We're gonna talk about your 2020 business plan. I'm gonna give you some ideas for what we're gonna to do to shift. But first we should share my screen now. And I want to show you a couple of uh, materials that I have gathered and prepared for to help give you uh, really good ideas on what you should be using in your own business. So let me start sharing my screen and I would need this to be collaborative. Otherwise, it's kind of useless for me because if you don't talk, you're not going to gather as much on this class as you as you would normally get. So I would like your participation and to speak up. Here's my screen. And we're looking right now at a business plan by one of my good friends and uh, motivational speakers, Travis Robertson. I like his business plan because it's simplified for today's purposes. I don't have three hours to spend with you to do your business plan. So we're gonna do a simplified version. And if you have questions or details, then we'll follow it up in the subsequent meetings. And I, I'm gonna encourage you to send me your business plan if you want me to review it. And if you don't, then, I, and then you're not gonna be able, then I'm not gonna be able to help you. Uh, so check the screen. I'm trying to see how I can make this full screen. Um, okay, I can't really get the full screen. So I'll just go ahead and do it like this. Um, well, here it is. Okay, so uh, as I was taking notes in this class, the, the cool thing about this business plan is the fact that it's uh, simplified. It discusses the materials we need, and I have all parts of this book in, uploaded into the Google Drive. So if you want to follow up or take notes or do this on your own, then just go to the Team Dynasty Agent Resources, Education and Learning, and click on Travis Robertson Ignite. When we're in real estate, and these are my notes as well, you know, we all know that real estate is a tough industry. It's very competitive. There's lots of realtors out there. 
And it's hard to be super successful in this business. If you recognize that, then you you, you need to be realistic in how we think. What I've seen that's successful, the common theme in so many great realtors that I've known in this Cobalt Banker umbrella and in other companies, the consistent theme is that the realtors who, are the, who show the greatest success are, are the very passionate in what they do. And passion is something that is uh, really your dedication to your craft. Passionate about your clients is another way to be passionate and making sure that they're getting the best protections, the best negotiations, the best price and terms. And if you are passionate about what you do, you are gonna do what it takes to be a professional, to know all the information, to, to be able to be a great consultant and to understand protocols and procedures, especially during a pandemic. So being passionate in what in, in for your clients and being passionate in your own business means you're educating yourself, you're getting yourself additional resources, you're building your foundation through improving your own knowledge. So the question comes, why don't we do what we know we should do? We all know this. We all know that we should be taking continuing education. We all know that we should be understanding the new laws. We should all know that Biden and the, the Fair uh, Cares Act 2 plan has some things that are gonna impact real estate, housing, and potentially uh, you know, aid for tenants and landlord relief. We all know that we should be tracking our expenses and creating a tax plan. We all know that we should be contacting 20 people a day and trying to set up five to 10 appointments per week. But why don't we do all these things? How come we are not setting ourselves for success? Because we know we're supposed to set appointments. We know we're supposed to cold call or door knock or farm people and meet new people or join organizations or churches or athletic groups or Facebook communities so that we can build ourselves or do more marketing in order to build our future business. And I can tell you that none of you are reaching 100%. None of you out there are reaching your full potential. I'm not even reaching my full potential. And you know why? Because we all have limiting factors. We all have a time constraint that we has the same thing. We all have obligations, families, expenses, debt, credit card payments, um, rent and mortgages to pay. So we, we all have things that take us aside and cause obstacles in our daily routines. So now we got to know, given the fact that we have obstacles, given our time constraints, let's understand a little bit about ourselves, understand our business, our families, and our clients and how we're gonna to get to success. So that's what I'm gonna set us up with and setting a tone. There's two desires that really motivate every single individual human being. There's a desire to avoid pain and there's a desire for pleasure. Here's, I'm gonna give you an example. Uh, desire to avoid pain is something like I do not want to be homeless like 20% or 15% of the uh, population right now in Los Angeles and in San Francisco. Uh, I don't want to be homeless. So to, in order to avoid being homeless and running out of money, I desire to make sure I have uh, set aside reserves, okay? Another way to avoid pain is I do not want to have cancer or I don't want to have a heart attack or a stroke. So therefore, I don't want to have health complications. So I will eat healthier. I will have a diet. I will have exercise in my daily routine. These are all ways to avoid pain and discomfort or health. And so these are people who are going to be proactive in their decision-making of their daily activities and routines. This is good 
to avoid pain, you would like to have uh, being proactive measures. Now, there's also the second people who are, have desire for pleasure. Uh, desire for pleasure that motivates us is like, I wish to take a vacation in Hawaii or go to the uh, Fiji and have a great family vacation with my wife. And these are all, you know, pleasure things. Like I wanna, I wanna buy a, a Porsche 911 GT3. So if, I, if these are my pleasure stuff, great. And if I want to have those things, and it's not as a dream, but I wanna have them my own and buy it and have the reality, then I need to have setting myself up how to have a plan to get myself that vacation or that Porsche. So there's different things to think about, but mo whatever your motivation is, you need to dig in deep, contemplate and reflect what are your desires? And then we're gonna use this to help motivate you and create your strong business plan to get there. But lots of us have the failure to do this kind of thinking and reflection. And because of this, it ends up to be called procrastination. And we turn our shoulds into needs. So we should all over ourselves is the notes that I wrote. And what I'm going to tell you is we should exercise. We should be prospecting. We should be waking up early in the morning and getting a, uh, you know, getting a routine done. And we don't say the word need. Instead, if you just changed and shifted your mindset saying, I need to exercise. I need to prospect. I need to wake up early to get this accomplished because I need to get to where I need to be. I need to get to Fiji. I need to get my Porsche. I need to provide a reserves for my family. If you shift your mindset to say, I need to exercise so I don't get uh, diabetes or, or cancer because I need to have a healthy routine. My doctor told me I need to get uh, lose 10 pounds or whatever it is. If you turn your mindset to saying, I need to do this, you will start doing this a little bit more into a routine. So my point of the matter is don't wait until things become ugly. Don't wait till your finances and your credit card debt becomes 20, 30, $50,000 before you say, I need to make money. I need you to tell yourself, take your shoulds that you know you think you should be doing, shifting that into, I need to do it now. If you could do that, you will start getting more success because you're going to be more invested in your own success because you're going to be driven. I hope that makes sense to you. That's the start. I'm setting a tone right now that all of you guys are too comfortable. All of you guys are too complacent in your your day-to-day -day routines and your lifestyle. And complacency is okay, but if you want to be successful and you want to reach your full 100% potential, you cannot be complacent. You need to be pushing yourself to new heights. You need to be pushing yourself to reaching new goals. And you need to really be driving your business to success because it's not going to happen for you all on its own. You're in control. You're in the driver's seat. And I need you to realize that today. So let's talk about future focus. And that's the next class. Future focus is the topic is about how am I planning for the future and really getting into focusing in what I need to do. Whatever you've done in the past, the choices that you've made, they've led you to where you are today. And you've made some good choices, like getting your real estate license. You made choices in joining Coldwell Banker Dynasty. And you made some great choices in, in, in participating in today's class or clicking on this video. So I'm happy you're making some good choices, but you're not making 100% all the great right choices to help you get to your, reach your full potential. So know and understand that you've made some failures. You do have some recognized, you have bad habits and bad routines and understand and accept the fact that you need to change your business, change your lifestyle or your habits or routines. There needs to be some change if you wanna have a different outcome. If you wanna have a different result, 
and you want to have more production than 2019 and 2020, you are going to need to change your business style. So if you accept this, you're willing to move forward into the next page and open the next chapter of your business and of your career, then it needs to start with you and me today. You need to start about thinking about our focus, future focus. It's the ability to see things as you want them to be and not just as they currently are. So if I want my future to be thriving business where I have a lot of referrals, I have a lot of past clients and experience and it's a lot simpler for me to, 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 to handle a lot of, uh, you know, four sales a, a month, whatever it is, then I need to be able to think and consider what are the characteristics shared by all these successful people that are already doing this? What's the common theme? And I can tell you their ability is that they're able to see in advance where they want to create their life and their business in the future. And they have already established and learned and spent the time to develop the ability to take massive and intentional action towards my vision in the future. So what we think about most of the time is what we ultimately become. And that's more of a th theoretical, theological kind of thing that you are what you eat. Well, guess what? You will become what you think you are. And the same logic, using rationing, rational. If I believe and say things like, you know, I can never learn technology. I can never, never really figure out how to use online marketing or I don't, I'm never going to be able to be capable of being a great social media expert and uh, whatnot. Guess what? I will become that. I will limit myself that way. I will not become a social media expert. I will not become a master of listings or whatever it is that I'm thinking about because I've already accepted the fact that I can't do it. And I talked to you two weeks ago about eliminating the words can't and no. I, um, from my vocabulary in, in what I perceive of myself because then you're already setting yourself up for failure. But if I think of myself that I can hit 10 sales this year, I can boost and double my production this year. And I think about the, the successes and the feelings of, 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 of emotionally happiness and excitement of, of, of actually accomplishing this then I will actually try myself much harder to become that. So let's understand future focus from an action standpoint. Action is not a personality type. It's not something that is a skill. Action is not something that you either have or have not. Everyone has the ability to take action. Unless you are handicapped and you have two arms and two legs that are removed from your body and your brain is mentally incapacitated, and or you have your blind or your, your hearing is impaired, you have no excuse. Know that you're blessed to have your full function of your body, your brain, your, be your motor skills, your ability to think and take action. Because there are so many people out there less fortunate than you, and they're not able to take the action that you're capable of. And so one, the first thing I want to say is don't waste your skills. Don't waste, waste your God-given talent and your, your abilities. When the motivation is big enough and intense enough, every human naturally will take action. So let me give you an example. There's people out there who don't know how to swim. And if you threw them into a pool or an ocean, guess what? They have two choices. Do nothing and drown or struggle, move your arms around and find a way to stay afloat. Every human being is going to choose to try to float and, and, and swim, even if they don't know how to swim themselves. Because they know if they are thrown into the ocean and they don't start trying to swim, they are going to drown and die. So that's an example of don't. That's an example of someone who, when it's intense and large enough, they finally will take some action, even though they will tell themselves, 
in the normal circumstance, I don't know how to swim. I'll never learn how to swim. But guess what? You can swim. So think about that in your business. Do you need to wait until your credit card bills is $50,000 or the bank is going to foreclose on your property or you have to file bankruptcy bankruptcy before you start trying to do some real estate business? I'm telling you, don't wait until such a severe situation. Don't wait until the IRS is coming after you for unpaid tax bills. Don't wait for the mortgage collector to come after you for, for an eviction notice or a foreclosure notice. Take action today. Another example is uh, not only just swimming, but there are situations where they've seen a elderly or an older woman who is walking the street and she saw uh, a baby or a child underneath the car. And it's crazy, but the stories say that she lifted the vehicle of the car to save that baby and remove them from under the tire. I don't know if it's true or not, but I'm just saying this kind of stories are out there and it's saying that you have the ability within to do incredible things, powerful things, magical things. If you untap those resources, if you can tap untap into your own self individual, uh, abilities. So anyway, that's just a little of a message out there. How you feel determines how you act 97% of the time. So if I wake up feeling exhausted, tired, lethargic, if I lazy, guess what? <laughs> that day is going to be such a waste. Trust me. But if I wake up feeling great and I have my music blow blowing and I feel inspired and I'm, I'm singing and I'm having a perfect breakfast and it really motivates me, maybe some good news, like I, my fa maybe my family or my wife and spouse, we say something positive, we say encouragements or words of wisdom to each other. If you feel great, then you will have a great day. So why don't you start having and trying to set yourself up with feeling better, not always looking negative or pessimistic, not always thinking about, oh, I don't have this, I don't have that. Why don't you instead think and feel, feel blessed about what you do have? Okay. And that will help you start out with a positive mindset. Okay. One quote, most people wait to be motivated before taking action. Successful people create their motivation for action. And so that's what I want you to understand. That's why I'm spending this time. So now let's talk about future focus and how that really understands your mindset. And normally speaking, think this is how the procedure thought process goes. We have a thought, and then we have what's called a, uh, a feeling about that thought, like, uh, and then we take action, and then there's results. So here's an example of that. Oh, my thought, oh, I look at the mirror and I look and say, Eesh, Kelvin, you've gained 10 pounds today. Wow, you're looking fat. You're overweight. And you look at the scale and I'm, you know, 10 pounds overweight. How does that make me feel? Oh, I feel sad. I feel uh, terrible, ugly looking. Uh, my feelings, I feel lethargic. I don't feel as healthy as I used to be. I feel older. I feel like I'm kind of deteriorating and getting fat. So that feeling makes me feel negative. So what's the actions I do? Oh, maybe I'm going to go take a jog today. I'm going to run on the treadmill. I'm going to do some exercise. I'm going to eat a diet. And what's the result? I possibly lose a pound for that day. Okay? So that's the normal process of people. And you might get results that are what's called uh, small little uh, baby steps. And I might have lost a pound. I might have lost two pounds. And then I forget about that feeling and that thought next week. And then I start going back to my old routines. And I start eating ice cream at midnight, because I do. And then I start eating a, a, a snack at night. And I start uh, stopping my routine of exercise. And then my weight comes back. Okay? If you are wanting something called lasting results, which means having a, you know, a milestone or, or, or creating some sort of 
everlasting type of mindset, then you need to change the way this process works. So again, the same thing, you have your thoughts, you have your feelings about that thought, like I feel fat, I feel like I'm deteriorating, I feel lazy, but what are the actions that I can do repeatedly to formulate a new habit that's gonna give me the lasting results that I want? And if my goal was to lose 20 pounds and I wanna stay consistently at 160 pounds, for example, then I need to, under, the missing point is the habits. The missing theme is creating the habits that's going to give me everlasting uh, results of success of what I'm, what I'm trying to accomplish as a goal. So if you include the habits necessary, what are some of the habits that I need to implement? I need to have a diet like breakfast, lunch, and maybe a light dinner. I need to have a habit where I don't eat after nine o'clock or 10 o'clock PM. I need to have it that I can only have 2,500 calories per day or less. I need to have a habit of regular exercise of 30 minutes to an hour every single day, whatever it is. You guys all know what, what kind of uh, habits that are for exercise and for weight gain and loss, but I need to have a plan of, of those habits that I can stick to, to create a routine. And we all talk about habits that it takes, I think it takes about two to three weeks of consistently doing something continuously in order for that action to become a habit. So you can do it successfully and diet for a week, but unless you do it and keep sticking to it for more than two to three weeks, then you've now ingrained and tra uh, traditioned your body to to, to be able to, to really just understand that habit is now become a reality. And then you'll get everlasting results. And we can implement the same thing into our own business, into our business habits. So what's a habit? I'm gonna give you an example. I'm gonna wake up at eight o'clock in the morning, eat my breakfast, get to the office at 9 a.m. every single day. And from nine o'clock to 10 o'clock, I am going to follow up on all of my emails and get that out of the way because I do not want to look at any emails after 10 o'clock. And then from 10 to 12 o'clock, I'm going to focus strictly on clients, lead generation, and prospecting. And from 12 to 1, I'm going to eat. And from 1 to 3, I'm going to set up my appointments from last week. 1 to 3 is when I'm going to be meeting with my clients, setting up some Zoom calls, and creating and building these relationships that I have for follow-ups from one to three. From four to five, I'm gonna visit properties. And from five to six, I'm gonna uh, send out any final uh, things that I, I promise others I'm gonna do. I'm gonna send them do, and get those off uh, to do this. That's a habit, that's a routine. And that's something that you can all do. That's an example of what you should be doing for your daily routines. Now, how do we condition ourselves for this future focus? How do we condition this to become a habit? And scientists have said you have 60, every human has 60,000 thoughts that come across our mind every single day. Some of our thoughts are negative, that's normal. And some of our thoughts are about how we're spending time thinking of the past, like, oh, negative, negativity of our past actions or past outcomes. And so if you're spending a lot of your thoughts on negativity or some of the actions like I, I have, uh, for example, most of our thoughts are negative. Some things is like, uh, I didn't get this listing. And I thought about, you know, last week I went on the appointment. I feel terrible. I, I did everything I should normally be doing. And I, you know, I, you know, I'm just sad. You're letting that last week's action impact my proactive business today. So we need to let, let that go and forget about it. Successful people, they focus on their thoughts of the future. They really, they understand you cannot change the past. We can't change history or those other outcome, outcomes, but we have the ability to change our future. And if you know that you can change your future, 
then what would our, our then you start thinking about us you know the mindset of how do i improve myself and that i covered that all with you two weeks ago uh when i reflected about how i lost my own listing if you do not change the way you think your future will be a repeat of the past we all know this that uh, if, if you keep on doing the same things you're going to keep on getting the same results okay so now that we understand this I want to tell you that average people wait to be motivated. Successful people create their motivation. And um, what I'm trying to say is let's start thinking about how to motivate ourselves to be successful and how we're going to create that kind of mindset to thrive. So give me uh, JC Penny. This is the guy who created, you know, Macy's, JC Penny, Nordstrom's. He says, Give me a stock clerk with goals and I will give you a man who will make history. Give me a man with no goals and I will give you a stock clerk. So what that means is you need to have goals. Otherwise, you're just going to be wasting away. And when you have goals, when you have a vision, when you have a plan to, to succeed, you inevitably will have and feel more powerful. So I want you to think about some of the goals that you have in your family, for your lives, for your career, for your finances, and for your retirement. Think about your own goals, but make sure your goals will excite you. It's, it shouldn't be something like, I, my goal is to, um, you know, sell, you know, or, or make, you know, $50,000 this next year. That's not exciting to me. My goal should be making, you know, three hundred or five hundred thousand dollars this coming year. That'll be exciting when I have three or four deals every single month, and I'm closing business, and I'm meeting so many people, and I'm really building a strong network, and, and all of the accolades that come along with it. That is exciting. Your goal should also be there to inspire you to need to overcome my fears and my doubts. So it needs to trigger something out of you and an emotion where you don't let your fears and your doubts stop you. What that means is, you know, if, if my goals really inspire me, uh, for example, um, we're talking about the, let's talk about a fear of cold calling. Or, or calling and talking to strangers or public speaking and having a seminar. If I have a fear to do all these things and I doubt my own confidence and I doubt my, I'm not a good speaker and I'm not a great person with language or my English is not good, whatever excuse you think you have, your goal needs to really push you out of the comfort zone where I understand that I have a fear or language impediment, speech impediment, or I have a fear of public speaking or meeting new people, but I don't care about my own um, challenges. I still need to get to the point B. I still need to have that family vacation in Fiji and Hawaii, and I need to have my Porsche. If my goals are that inspirational and I really want my goals to be met, I should be able to overcome those fears, put them aside, and who cares if I have a speech impediment or who cares if my English is terrible, I'm still going to go out there and do my presentations anyways. That's what you need to do. You need to overcome those fears by putting yourself out of your comfort zone. These goals need to enable you to design your future rather than accept your own results. So designing your future means creating a pathway to success rather than accepting my same every year results of XYZ sales. So how does that happen? That happens through designing a plan, uh, having a structure, following up on your plans, having accountability, and you know, tracking your results. So most people only write down goals they think they can achieve, but I'm gonna tell you, you should write goals that you really push you to 
make you feel uncomfortable. Like, ooh, I can never sell a million dollars in real estate sales. And if I think about it, I could. I really could. And I want to be able to, 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 to push myself to the point where, you know what, I can do this. And it's not that crazy, even though it might seem crazy or it might seem like a, a fairy tale. But if you really think that there's a, a realm of possibility, then I want to write that down as a goal. Most people only set goals based off of who they were in the past, but not who they will become in the future. And when I talk about that, that's saying like, oh, you know, I'm an ordinary, uh, ordinary Joe Schmo. You know, I'm a, I'm a realtor. I'm an average, you know, most average realtors, they only have goals of making a six figure income, like a hundred thousand dollars. And that's who I was in the past. Maybe that goal was there when I was a rookie realtor of making a hundred thousand dollars, but I'm not a rookie anymore. I, I got 16 years in the business. I got a, a wide network. I got multiple companies. I got lots of investors. So I cannot have the same goals that I set many years ago. I need to have a new goal. I need to become the best I can be today, built based upon who well, all the decisions that I've done in the past and the actions. I need to be making you know $500,000 a year in sales. That's the comfort zone that I want to push myself towards. So... That's the courage that you need to start to find. That's the ability to act in spite of your own fears because these fears, they won't go away until after you've taken action. So that fear, like I talked public speaking and I speak in public a lot recently, but guess what? I never was strong in public speaking. Um, but ever since I started be taking a more of a public position and I'm starting to lead and manage more agents and I'm starting to lead an entire association of 2,500 members, I've had to force myself to take away and, and push myself out of my comfort zone so that I naturally became more comfortable with public speaking by taking action. I allowed myself and submitted my name for not to be nominated to be a president of the association. I took multiple uh, speaking engagements where Coal Banker asked me to speak in front of their crowd, in front of a small audience. And then, they, and then I did, I spoke for the entire uh, theater at the Coal Banker annual uh, conference, Gen Blue. And I've had thousands of people in front of me listening to my to me as a panelist, and I've took baby steps. So sometimes I was just a panelist, sometimes I was the main speaker, and until when I was the president, I'm I'm really just saying the entire goals of the association, speaking on behalf of 2,500 members. So those fears now, I have no fears of public speaking whatsoever because I'm prepared, I've done it, and I practiced it. And I've taken actions to get me to overcome those fears that I used to have. So one cool thing, I like this quote from John Ron below. Don't wish the job was easier. Wish that you were better. Okay. And, and that's a big, big, big thing. Like so many people wished, oh, I wish... I wish it was much easier getting, you know, you know, hundred thousand dollars or or five hundred thousand. I wish, I wish this 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 transaction was so much simpler, or didn't have so much problems like tenants or or uh, 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 liens or or various type of obstacles like city inspections and appraisals and all these things that are thrown our way in a transaction. I don't wish the job was easier. I just, you know, you need to wish that you were better to handle those, those situ obstacles, or I was better in my problem solving, or I was proactive to foresee this issue so that it never became an issue in the first place. That's what you, you should be wishing, not to have an easier job. So here I'm gonna tell you, raise your goals, set higher bars for yourself, and you can always adjust your present state of mind and your business so that you meet your goals, but really need to ask yourself, why are you here? Why are you in this business? Why are you 
taking the risk of exposing yourself to the pandemic and COVID. The reason is because we're out there to make sales. We're out there to sell a house, help a client, bring a family and match them to the right house or to sell a property for the maximum price and terms for a client. So yes, we understand what the, what the, what the business is, but really ask yourself, what's the hidden underlying motivation inspiring you to do this business and stay in this industry? Your future needs to be so inspiring, you just can't stop simply thinking about it. So like I've seen some people, uh, one of my agents just told me I'm going to buy a Porsche 911 this year. And I asked him, you know, wow, you know, I, I, I love it. That's awesome. I'm, I'm, thank you for sharing me your goal. Um, and it's come to the point where he can't stop thinking about it. And it's on his mind. And he's searching online for different types of Porsches out there or, or, or for sale. And, and so I'm just telling you, shit. You guys with me? Are you guys with me? Can you hear me? Okay, well, I'm, I'm online back. Uh, I had to, sorry guys, I just had a power outage in the building. So I lost internet connection for a minute. Thank you for staying on the call. I'm gonna continue on with the training. Uh, hopefully you guys can hear me, but let me know or speak to me uh, or interrupt me in case you can't see my screen or anything like that. I'm gonna jump back into the um, Ignite playbook for our business plan. And let me jump back into my full screen mode. And I was talking about the inspiration that your future needs to be so inspiring you can't stop thinking about your future. So when we think about our future, uh, I had an agent who told me how they uh, wanted to buy their own house. And as a young lady, she had a, a young real estate career. And she told me a bit that her and her husband wanted to purchase a property. And I told her, well, timing is always great when you're using it to occupy, uh, when you use it for owner occupy. So, you know, don't, there's no perfect timing whatsoever. The, if you guys plan to be there for five years or longer, it makes sense. And she goes, yeah, we do. So I told her, well, I want you to create a plan. How are you going to get this, buy this property? So think, look at your finances, look at your budget, look at your spending and find out what you feel comfortable as a, you know, down payment and a, as, as a mortgage, uh, your monthly payment. And then I, and I told her, okay. Look, to get to where this income level needs to be, you need to take action today. You and your spouse need to start hitting the goal of, you know, 150,000 or 200,000 combined income. So how are you going to do your part? And I, I told her, look, you, your husband is counting on you. You already know his income is going to be, I just say, $100,000. And if you need to hit that mark, you need to contribute $80,000 of your own commissions. So to get 80,000 in commissions in one year, I need you to take eight sales or seven sales to get you there. And if you need seven or eight sales to get you to where you have your home, then I need you to be doing activities to get yourself to seven or eight sales in that year. And I need you to have daily activities, weekly activities, monthly activities. So she did it. She, uh, she had that plan. She goes, yeah, that makes sense. And I, I can do seven sales. I can make sure I get there because she really couldn't stop thinking about having her own place to call home. And so she worked hard, she did it and eventually accomplished that goal. And I'm very happy to say she's doing well and very happy in her business. But I'm just telling you when she hit that goal, I gave her a new goal. And I said, there's something else that you must want. 
There must be something else that you need and or want to reach a new goal. Don't just settle for it and get complacent. Now that you have your house, you still have to make the payments. You still have to reach more goals. You still have to hit more sales. And so we had another discussion about a new business plan like I'm doing with you guys today. So the reason why people fail to achieve their goals is one is they're not clear about what they want. They really don't have that compelling emotional buy-in. So they're not clear like, oh, I want to make a million dollars and, but I have no direction and guidance, how I'm going to get there. You're not going to reach that, that goal. Secondly, if it doesn't compel you to reach that goal, then it's not really, you don't have the buy-in like, oh, I have to contact people and talk to people. I have to, uh, prospect and do mail outs and process, you know, uh, I, I don't, I don't, I'm too, I don't want to do all that hard work. Guess what? You're not going to get there. So if you want to get there, you have to put in the work and you're going to have to do what you can. So that's what I wanted to share regarding that part. Um, the lights are out again. So there's another uh, rolling blackout. Luckily, I'm on my cell phone Wi-Fi so you can still hear me. The uh, So I apologize for the darkness. How is this, think about this whenever you're setting a goal. Why is this goal important to me? What would the impact be to me if I don't achieve this goal? And what will the impact be to me if I do achieve this goal? And I'll take the, if I don't take action, they don't hold themselves accountable to the goals. That's giving, allowing excuses for these realtors not to, to really reach uh, their goals. They're allowing themselves uh, an escape, a way out. So think about what you want. And if you want to have the highest success of reaching your goals, you create a specific accountability appointment with someone who's going to keep you accountable. That's why they tell you to have coaching. But you can it could be your spouse. And you make a commitment. You make a commitment to someone else that you care about that, hey, I'm going to make $80,000 this, this up and coming year in sales. I really want to hit this for you, for the family. I'm going to make a plan to do this. I'm going to commit to doing all the daily activities and we are going to get there because I want to have our family vacation at Fiji. Okay. So that's how you have and create an accountability partner to help you reach your goals. And there's other goals. It's not all about your real estate career. As a person of broker who I want to teach agents is I want to have multiple goals and setting ourselves up for future financial freedom. And you should have financial goals. Uh, maybe I will have a goal like I want to pick up one income property every single year to help me work and build towards my retirement for passive income. Maybe I have a physical goal like losing 20 pounds. Maybe I have a relational goal like I want to rebuild my family. I haven't seen my family or relatives in the whole pandemic. And I want to have a stronger relationship with all my relatives. I will create a monthly Zoom meeting with all reunion family members because that's how important it is to me. I might have a spiritual goal like I am going to, you know, do some meditation and reflection uh, every single morning. Or I'm going to go to church every single week and I'm going to donate to the, uh, to the church every single you know, week, X amount of dollars, whatever your spiritual goals are, that's fine. And you should have an emotional goal. Like I need to really have to achieve happiness. I need to be emotionally, uh, super, super, uh, you know, satisfied with everything that's going on in my life with my, my family. And I need to be able to have that fun with my, with my son and spend that uh, time with him. So it should make, that's going to give me happiness of, 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 of my goals to spend two hours a day with my son. So read your goals, have something to remind yourself every morning. And I would tell you to create a vision board of the goals that you want, put it up on a little bulletin board. Pictures are great, and that will help remind yourself every morning that you need to be doing something to get to there.
you need to be taking some actions today to get you to where you want to be tomorrow. And people who don't have goals, they end up spending their days helping others reach their goals. And you know this because guess what? Your clients have goals and they have, uh, they want to buy something. They want to buy a house or sell a house. And if you don't have your own goals, you're going to be helping other, everyone else reach their own goals. So don't be that of type. So there's an exercise that you can do. And uh, let's say you have a financial goal of $230,000. And let's say you made $185,000 one year and you want to increase your business 25%. That's $230,000. What pleasure, you know, it's just a, here's a, a discussion on how to really break through your mindset. And I want to have a new house, a new car, a vacation. And I want to avoid failure and disappointment to my family. I want to avoid pain like being inadequate or inferior or disappointment from my family members who rely on me to make income. I, you know, and so if you, if you work through these exercises for your own and fill them out, you're going to be able to really understand a clear vision of yourself and your future. And now we get into the business portion of this. I'm going to spend the next 22 minutes and we're going to end at 3.30 regarding a simplified plan that you're going to be able to take. So I can't do every uh, uh, fill in the blanks for you, but these are the answers to the business plan. What is your vision for the future? And ask yourself, you know, what do I want to, do I see myself, uh, is, you know, selling 10 homes, 20 homes a year? Or, or do I still myself, see myself, uh, buying one property a year or, or two properties a year to fix and flip, whatnot. So we need to think about all of these uh, eight questions in below. What value do you bring to your customers and to the marketplace? And I told you guys already to write down your value proposition. What's unique to you? What do you bring to the table? And answer the question, hey, I know uh, three realtors but you know, I like you, Kelvin. What is the reason, primary reason I should use you over the other two realtors that I know? What is the separating differences or what do you do in your business or your marketing or your style that makes you compelling or should be why I, you, why I work with you? And if you don't have an answer to that, then you've, you're, you're setting yourself up for failure. I already told you guys this every single time on training, know your value proposition and what you deliver and the value you provide in the transaction. Ask yourself, where will your business come from this year? Where are you gonna find these leads? And what financial results did you achieve last year? And now ask yourself, what are your goals for this coming year? And what's your goals? It's, you know, Remember, it has to be a little bit uncomfortable on your goals, but it also should be realistic. What is your primary goal? in life, in your career, in your relationships, in your family. So understand what's your primary goal and prioritize them. What marketing strategies will you need to implement in order to achieve the goal above? So there's different marketing strategies that I'm gonna to talk to you about. What are the daily, weekly activities required to achieve this goal? Like how many people do I need to talk to every day how many appointments do I need to set up for every single week? And how many listings do I need to get every single month? And ask yourself, am I on track to hit my goal? And when you track your past, then you can predict your future. So I track, I do track my own uh, business. I do track how short I am to my goals or how, how hard I, I worked this year versus the, the previous year. So I know where I stand, but do you know where you stand? Okay. Some people just don't know until they look at their 1099 and they go, Oh, I thought I made more money than this. I hope you're in the, you, some of you are like, Oh, wow. I hit my goal. I want that to happen to you guys. So, um, hopefully most, you know, most of you guys are working towards that. So there's a vision and values page here. This talks about where do you see yourself in three years, in five years, in 10 years. And um, 
to me, you're going to have to really, you know, everyone is unique. So uh, I had a vision a long time ago to be, a, this is, you know, back in, I don't know, five, six years, seven years ago, when I took this class and I had a, a vision to be a leader in this office. And I had a vision. I wrote all of these answers many years ago that I would become a broker in three years. And I'm going to have two, more than 250 agents under my uh, license. And I'm going to have a prosperous, successful team of agents that I'm going to be really working towards. Uh, Self-sustaining offices with a more systematic plan, repeat business, a lot of referrals that are constantly coming to me. And that's the vision I created many years ago. And how am I different from other brokers? How am I different from other trainers and educators and mentors? So I asked myself my value statements, and this is coming from me where I'm opening up to you. I'm different because of my education and my training. I'm much more geared towards uh, uh, investing in my own self. Took a lot of different classes. This is one of the better business plans I've taken. And I trained myself to be a better to be a better leader. I've you know taken classes like Ascend, and uh, you know it helped me become a better uh, situational leader. Then I also differ from other realtors because I'm I'm honest and ethical, and I know that's a given in our industry. But it's not something you're supposed to brag about. But I can tell you there's a lot of dishonest and dis and unethical agents out there. So I guess I mentioned that as a value statement because I do value honesty and I do value agents that are ethical. I truly care about being a professional, about having the right integrity and doing the right thing because I want to sleep at night. I don't want to hide or change business uh, name or you know close down a business, open up a new one, close down another one and, or, or fear a liability because I want to be able to sleep at night and not you know, think about uh, that I did bad business and hide. There's some people out there who have a business model to cheat others, to just do whatever it takes to take income now, and then they'll, you know, uh, 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 close the business and open up a new one with another name later or next year. That's not me. That's why our company has been here since 1984. Uh, I do truly care about my own client's satisfaction and the outcomes that I do. So I take a personal invested interest in making sure that my set clients are satisfied with my services. And so I, I protect my clients. I fully uh, invest myself so that with the guidance I give them is as if I give my own family members, people I do love and care about. So I do have a tradition of uh, real estate in my family. And that's something that's important and unique about me is I'm a second generation broker and I'm a third generation American of my family uh, here in the U.S. So I, I have a history of my family to that really just to me is it makes me unique. So my skills, I'm very fast. I'm quick responder. I'm efficient in my communication skills are good. I'm a good negotiator. I'm a great listener and, and I know how to understand others. So I start to track my business and we can use this page as an example, how to source where my transactions come from. And this is a, an example of 2013 to 2014 goals. I, it, this is just a, a, a demonstration that if you have a goal of increasing your business 27%, then you would have to have additional sales goals based upon the source of your business. And so you can fill this out for yourself, compare last year and set a 2021 goal for this year and see where you're really gonna try to track where you're gonna build your business. And whether you focus on buyers or you focus on new construction or you focus on sellers, I don't care where you get your business. Some people have a referral only business too. But as long as you have and source where your goals are and what your supplemental income will be like, and you can count the number of hours that you work, then you can kind of value that every single appointment that you set would be worth $4,600 in this example. But some of us might not have that kind of same assessment if we're not as successful. So whatever it is, I wanna just know and understand that there are certain 
activities that should be done every single day and every week and every month. Here's an example of a monthly type of uh, business plan that you attend two training events every year. One might be the car seminars. One might be Generation Blue in October. Then you have, you know, newsletter that you send out every month. You might have a social media campaign that you send out every month. You might have a CMA to all of your clients right before tax deadline about the value of their property. You want to know what your home is worth? Here's a complimentary CMA and all the activity of your, of your neighbors. And that's great timing during to set yourself up for the hot summer months of, of this peak activity of, of sellers and listings. Then I might do, you know, CUEs, conditional, uh, you know, th different types of activities of marketing. Uh, here's like community events. Once a year, I do something for my com uh, community or I do pro bono work or I do volunteerism. Then I have a farm that I do some sort of monthly activities and whatnot. So I'm giving you an example. Go ahead and put it together your own marketing calendar here and send it to me if you want my input. Then fill in your weekly activities. And these are important because you need to take accountability for your own time. And so you need to have touches and, and uh, 21 touches every single year to your client in order to stay relevant and top of mind. So you need to follow up with your leads and spend you know twice a day following up with various types of leads. Maybe, maybe some in the morning, some in the afternoon. Set up yourself maybe one or two appointments every single week. Write a blog or a story or an article and share it to your database. And post a video to YouTube once a week. Here's, I'm just giving you some examples of what are some things that you can do in your weekly activities. So fill in the blanks and uh, let me know if you want me to monitor and help you reach your goals. And... Lastly, uh, I'm going to talk about the marketing, and that's something that we'll cover in brief. Uh, but ultimately, your goal is to motivate your clients to take steps, take action, and to be with you no matter what. Hopefully, they give you a call. And you want to work with someone who's a specialist, not a generalist. So don't just do generic marketing like, I am, you know, blah, 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 Kelvin Chang, I sell real estate. Let me know if you want to buy or sell. That's not necessarily catering to what their needs. But if I say I'm a specialist in San Gabriel Valley or Temple City area, and I'm a specialist in working with first time home buyers or uh, people with uh, large lots, or maybe I'm a specialist in development and entitlements, and I'm looking specifically for fixer uppers or uh, just you know large parcels. You know, whatever it is that you do in your business that you're specializing in or have experience in, then, then you can cater and target your marketing to those niche markets based on the area. You could base it on price points. Like I, I, many years ago, I shifted my gear of just doing normal sales. And I recently have started specializing more in higher end luxury homes. And that's something I did. I decided to do a, long, a couple of years ago that I wanted to focus more on higher end luxury homes because it's the same amount of work. It's just a higher price point and higher commissions. So for me, I thought that was important and I wanted a better lifestyle. So I, I chose, you know, regions of neighborhoods of higher worth and, you know, like Arcadia, San Marino, Temple City and Bradbury. So those are things that I did, but I'm asking you, you don't have to just only work luxury. Maybe you want to focus on condos and townhomes because you have, uh, I know a lot of people, the bulk of the sales and units in, in California are units. So maybe you want to work volume versus quanti uh, uh, qu quality versus quantity or quantity versus quality. There's no wrong answer or right answer. And there's five stages of marketing. Don't just think that it, the marketing, most people think it's only to generate leads. There's more to that. Not only do you need to generate leads, but you also got to nurture those leads. You got to stay relevant and because not everyone has a need or motivation to buy or sell in one or two months. Sometimes they have to, 
think two, three years is when they want to buy or sell their property. So you got to nurture that lead for one, two, three years or beyond and keep like, like, like I think of a little seed. I got to plant a seed with lead generation that, Hey, I'm a great realtor in your marketplace, in your neighborhood. And I've been doing this for a long time. I need to plant a seed in their mind to my client. And then I need to nurture that seed by watering it, building a relationship, uh, dripping some campaigns of uh, articles about taxes and changes to law, Tenant Protection Act of 2019, you know, all this cool stuff, eviction moratoriums, anything that's relevant, CARES Act, relief for landlords, relief for tenants, anything that you want to, to whoever you're catering to. And eventually I will convert that lead to a potential client at stage three, which multi, which basically means I have a relationship now. I have trust. I have the ability to now they will come to me or let me know, or I, I have the ability to call them anytime I find a property that matches their, their needs and I can convert them to a client any single time. The fourth stage of marketing is the service itself. That's inside the transaction. What is my marketing like? What is my uh, service and my uh, uh, promises that I provide? And 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 the, what is the feeling and the emotion that, that they get when working with me? And what is everything that I do after I've already finalized my transaction with the client? What am I going to do to stay in front of them to get their repeat business and to get their referrals and their testimonial? What am I doing post sale. So once you consider the five parts of marketing, you realize that most of us are only doing one or two of these stages and not all five. So um, I'm not here to talk about the lead generation part itself, but I just wanted you to understand the marketing side, how you're going to build that in your business. Any questions today, right now, before I want to leave five minutes for Q&A? Yes, Kelvin. Any questions uh, or can comments? We, yes, Kelvin, can you hear me? This is Jean. So can we serve uh, 60 days? So if you wanted to work on this exercise and, and really improve yourself, again, I'm just going to start sharing my screen so you can see um, how to find the materials. And so I went into our Dynasty Agent Resources, and I'm going to show you how to get there. Okay. Education and learning. And uh -huh. once you click into this category, you can get into training and learning tools. And then mm -hmm. click on Travis Robertson Ignite. That's if you want to read my entire playbook of Ignite. It's a two-day seminar, and the one I used was right here. This is part one. And okay. if you want to have a, a sample marketing plan, here are some activities done by this successful realtor in Maryland. In January, he does a newsletter to his sphere of influence and he sends out a two-page direct mail. February, he sends to his sphere of influence another newsletter and postcards about uh, to his farm areas that he works. And then he sends a newsletter every you know every month, postcard, postcards, blah 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 blah. Okay, but he also does his business plan. Uh, web leads, uh, he spends two calls per day uh, for the first five business days with that, until, that, until he makes contact with that client. Then he sends three to five emails every week to, a, to an internet lead and one or three text messages until he reaches this contact. So he continues to follow up on, on internet leads because sometimes internet leads take some chasing to do. And then he, after two weeks of after contact, uh, he does, you know, he has this kind of plan sent. And, you know, just give you an example of what another realtor does. And his business does work with internet leads. And, you know, I just give you examples of what they, uh, another realtor does. I liked something else that's over here.
and he shared some materials that we could look at. Um, and I, I took my notes on this section here. So I, I encourage you to read my notes too, because everything, you know, I can teach this as well as Travis Robertson, obviously, because it's this is his own materials. But I wrote a lot of notes on myself about how to really just, um, ha, 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 you know, just 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 understanding the business and taking a step back and reflecting. Um, any questions? Okay. Well, I'll continue with the materials in the next next two two weeks from today's training, and we'll continue on regarding building your business plan with my, I, I didn't have enough time today, I covered a lot, but I had some action items that I want you to do during a pandemic. So I'll continue part two of the business uh, plan session for 2021, next two weeks, and uh, hope you can stay with me. I apologize, we do still have a power outage, that's why I'm still in the dark, but um, I was able to get through this with you guys using my internet tethering connection so thanks for staying on. I'm sorry I'm in the dark, but let me know if you have any comments or feedback and uh, I look forward to seeing you guys next week. And okay, thanks guys. Calvin.